Amen. Anywhere is home, so long as God is there. Amen. Amen. We sing it, do you understand it? We sing it, do you believe it? Amen. Anywhere is home if, if Christ is there. Amen. That ought to be our, our mindset, especially this morning. Amen. God is truly wonderful. It's good to be here. I, I hope everybody had an excellent holiday, excellent Thanksgiving. Um, certainly, certainly, certainly during this time, it's a little hard for some, harder for others, as a tragedy has struck this past Thanksgiving season, um, and even some from previous Thanksgivings, but it, it, it's important for us, Lord have mercy. If anything, Thanksgiving helps us to take a moment just to recognize what God has done in our lives. Amen? Ain't a lot of amens on that. But God has done a lot for us. So we ought to take a moment just to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Ah! See, I was going somewhere. Well, see, y'all's parents say amen, amen, but we ought to just say thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, well, certainly, 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 it is a blessing to be here. I had said it earlier during our prayers, but certainly keeps us in divine in your prayers. Uh, uh, as Brother Ron Johnson, he had passed away last week um, peacefully in his sleep. Now, I should let you know there will be no funeral. Um, uh, he was uh, cremated or was to be cremated, uh, but the entirety of his family was coming for Thanksgiving, and so they had set aside that time and said, we're going to celebrate his life. We all together anyway. Um, and uh, if I could, if I could, if I could... Uh, if I could just share a personal note, Brother Ron, I, I loved him dearly. When I, the, when I came here in September 2015, uh, right before August, if y'all remember, we had that rotation. And the last time I was here, part of that rotation, I said, uh, today is my last time preaching here as a visitor. And Brother Ron, he just, he just, and I'm like, what was that about? Then after he walked up to me, he started crying. He said, I thought you were never coming back again. I was, I was I'm like, you know, that Brother, Brother Ron was all right. He had jokes. Many jokes, plenty, amen. Um, some I won't share right now, but, but some uh, uh, just even in how he said he was going to go out. But brother, brother Ron always has some great jokes, and he'll certainly be remembered for those good times, amen. And that's exactly what we need to hold on to uh, for our brother. If you have your Bibles, you should have your Bibles. If you turn to the scripture that was read to your hearing, Psalm 1. Psalm 1, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Scripture is on uh, on the screen as well. Psalm one, six verses. I said I was going to be a, a, a less of a burden bearer to Brother Ron Holmes. The last week I said Psalm one thirty six, and he read the whole thing. I said I'm gonna just give you six verses today. Amen. 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 Psalm 1, beginning at verse 1. Let us, let us examine the word. The Bible says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And all God's children say, Amen, Amen, Amen. It's during this time of year that uh, we had began it last year and continuing it moving forward. But it's during this time of year that we begin to think about uh, the, 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 the blessings, if not that we have, but the blessings that we give out. Amen. 
This time of year is actually one of the most difficult mentally amongst people in our society. Um, it's not easy to deal with such an excited time when bad things have happened. Amen? Amen. And sometimes everything that has happened in the year, it, 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 it kind of just keeps rolling and rolling around about this time. The year's a, a new year is about to start. It's, it's in the holiday season and, 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 and sometimes that burden can rest heavy on us. So where we are in the scripture today is we're going to examine from the scripture something to, to keep our mind filled with the right stuff. Amen? So if you lend me your heart and ears to this thought, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? Amen? What's on your mind? One of the things I've learned as, as time has gone on is, is, is what's on your mind comes out. Amen? Amen? And how you conduct yourself and how you speak, it all comes out. What's on your mind, what sits on your mind comes out. Amen? Amen. So, so we are today completing our series or finalizing our series on spiritual disciplines for sanity. Amen? My hope with this series has been that we would take a serious or take serious the various threats to our peace of mind that are naturally occurring and that we implement those spiritual remedies that would cause us to retain our mind in those stressful and those trying situations. Amen. The truth is that these are just a few items that if we start these disciplines over the course of our lives, we will live a more peaceable life. Amen? Amen. Hmm. By no means is this everything that we've looked at this month, everything that we can do spiritually, but it is a good starting place, especially considering the sermon we'll look into today. This month, I wanted to focus on strengthening our minds and mental capacity with dealing with everything that society and our lives presents us each and every day. Um, society will cause you to lose your mind, amen? Yeah. Particularly if you stay tuned in to the news or tuned in to Facebook, amen? I'm just, because it, everything comes and hits you. We, we, we're so used to switching things, Amen. To go from even Facebook, one post that's joyous, another post that's dealing with death, another post that's dealing with the birth, another post. You switch that fast mentally, it'll mess you up. Amen. Three weeks ago, we had looked at Daniel chapter 6, and we had studied his reaction to the stresses in his life. Those stresses that would have cost him his life. And he didn't, he did not, hmm, he did not stay in the stress, he went to God. Amen. Even though the stress was caused by him going to God, he didn't change up his habit when stress happened. Amen? Two weeks ago, we focused on examining our schedule and carving out an extended time period in order to be alone with the Lord. Last week, we focused on thanking the Lord for any and everything because of all that we have in our lives because of his mercy. Amen? Lord, if I could sit there a second, we ought to be thankful because God didn't have to. Amen. Amen. God don't owe you. Amen. 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 If, if we're honest, we owe God. Amen. 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 I, I, I ain't sure. Was that everybody? everybody? Amen. Y'all understand Amen. That, that we're not worthy even to have the moment in time we have right now. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've done some things that's not worthy of having another breath Amen. of life. Amen. Amen. And, I, and I know it might say, oh, when you just come. No, no, no. You got to understand there are some things we've all done in our lives. We ain't told nobody. Amen. But God is good. Because of his mercy, we ought to thank him. Amen. 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 So this morning, this morning, we talked about, to sum everything up, we talked about regularly spending time with the Lord, having a long time away from people, and even having a grateful and thankful mindset to have all of these things all of our everyday life. Well, this week we close out our series with perhaps a topic that is key to our sanity. Our focus this morning is to open our Bibles so that we strengthen our roots. 
Amen. Amen. It's to open our Bibles so that we strengthen our roots. I like what Brother Ron said, uh, that, 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 that in reading the Bible over and over, you come to memorize certain things. Amen. Amen. Because to hold those things in your mind in the midst of so much trouble. Amen. Amen. Because let trouble come and, and you think you're in this by yourself and you don't remember, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Life gets hard. Amen. Amen. So, so just, just our focus really is to open our Bible, to look, to examine, to study our Bible so that we strengthen our roots. I'll get to the roots in a moment. But you've all heard the phrase, in one ear and out the other. That's a, that, that, that always was a lie. It never was true. In one ear, out the other. We heard it, we ain't do it is what happened. But in one ear and out the other, you see, whatever comes into the air, it sits. It stays, it takes root, it germinates. Amen? So if you're reading, hmm, I got my network marketers in, in the house. If you're reading personal development regularly, that will come out of your mouth. If you read and study the scripture regularly, that will come out. But if you get caught up on all the negative crap in our society, all of a sudden it will come out. You ain't even got to say nothing, it'll show up in your actions. Amen? Amen, amen. Here in our scripture reading, we are looking at a Hebrew poem of comparison between two groups, the righteous and the wicked. Right from the outset or from the very beginning of the psalm, we see the difference. Verse 1 would say, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. You see, there's a threefold point that's being made here. Blessed, favored, highly favored, good is the man that does not walk, Sit or stand with ungodliness. I don't walk with them folk. Hmm. We don't walk with those folk. We don't stand in their foolishness. We don't sit there and say, Amen. Hmm. There is a distinction between the two. The blessed man doesn't hold party with wickedness. Amen. The blessed person doesn't hold party with wickedness. We're going to come in a second. The separation does go a bit further in verse number two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. His delight isn't with the unrighteous but it's in the Lord. Specifically his Torah. Or his law, his commands, his direction. How do you tell? What does this mean? Simply put, there's a difference between righteous and unrighteous. We're, we're, not, we're not speaking about people, we're speaking about behavior. Amen? We're in a society right now that will say, in order for you to be your best self, you got to walk away from some people. It's said, but if they understood this, it wouldn't come out like that. What, 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 what this is saying right here, here is... The difficulty lies in understanding behavior. You see, there is a proximity that should remain with all people. Amen? Amen. A proximity. But there are ideas, conversations, more ideas that we should not entertain. Y'all heard me. Y'all with me this morning. Amen? Amen. There are certain, we can have proximity to a person, but there are certain things we don't deal with. For example, Thanksgiving took place. Now y'all be honest. Y'all look me right in my eyes and y'all be honest. It was some family members you didn't want to see this year. All of y'all laughing because it was some family members y'all didn't want to see this year. Some of y'all done got bothered by the fact every time I go there they finish the cranberry sauce before I get to it. Amen. Amen. It's just me. A a amen. It's, it's some folk you might not have wanted to see. They family. You cool with them, you good with them, but 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 you 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 keep you keep a little bit of di amen. amen. You keep a little bit of distance because you don't want to hear certain things. Amen. amen. We we all got folk in our we all got folk in our family. We all got friends that if you're going through something, you don't go around them. Because it just make you feel worse. Y'all y'all been there. There are some kind there are Conversations, ideas, thoughts 
none of us need to be around or entertained. We can be in proximity to the person. What does that mean? It means that there are some people we can be near, but the moment they start with the fooling, hey, 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 you know, I, I really can't, I can't hear that right now. Love you, but I, I can't hear that right now. Amen? Because just as much as we read and just as much as we study, what people say around us, in the air, it sits here. If it is negative, sits here, eventually you will find yourself. Amen? That's why, and I mean not to disrespect anybody, I personally don't like hearing about soap operas. Because ain't nothing great in a soap opera. It's drama, 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 and trauma. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's being sold that type of ability, that's why I don't necessarily like Shonda Rhimes. TV shows. Oh, y'all ain't heard me. I find it interesting for a person who's never been married, every time marriage is introduced in a show, nothing positive is about it. Scandal, y'all remember Scandal? Be honest, be honest, be honest. Ain't nobody gonna judge you, but be honest. Y'all seen Scandal? Olivia Pope? Papa Pope? Y'all know what I'm Oh, y'all know, y'all, okay, okay. It's just me and Dominique that was watching Scandal. Yeah, I just put my wife on black. But, 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 but. It's just us that was watching Scandal and Grey's Anatomy. Every marriage that was there, something negative happened and all of a sudden certain things were permissible. Like cheating. It happened long enough. It's in your ear long enough. The effect, I'm going to go back to the sermon. But y'all understand what I'm saying. You can be near a person, you can be close to a person, but you don't have to tolerate certain ideas and statements. Amen? Hmm. So here, the difference between the righteous and the unrighteous is actually made clearer in the second half of the psalm. Verses 4 through 6 would say, The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. It, 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 they, 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 they won't ride. Mm, I, they, they won't stand with us. But if we stand with, yeah, 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 there's a difference here. Sinners will not sit in the assembly of the righteous, but we, some righteous will sit in the seat of, and y'all yeah, hear what I'm saying. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The wicked is the opposite. They go with the wind. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Now, if you know anything, if we could talk horticulture, at, well, farming for a moment, you would take from the threshing floor you would take up with a pitchfork. Anybody ever been so far? Okay, okay it's cool, it's cool, go ahead. But you take it with a pitchfork. Dig into a huge amount. When the wind is blowing, you take it and you throw it up. And chaff would fly away with the wind. But the statement there is they're like the tra chaff driven by the wind. So if the wind says go this way, they're that way. If the wind says go this way, they're that way. Y y they go, whichever way the wind blows, they go on that way. Amen. Y'all yeah, 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 with me this morning. But, but he, he introduces this, and this is Lord Jesus' imperative for us to grasp. The big difference between the righteous and the wicked is not something that is based on character or attitude, but it is based upon resource. It's another farming term. Verses 2 through 3 would say, But his delight... His pleasure is in the law, the instruction, direction, and commands of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. Hmm. The righteous person delights in the law of the Lord. But referring backwards for a minute, righteous people won't tolerate certain conversation. Amen? They're not excited by that type of conversation. They're not anxious to get involved with that kind of conversation or drama. But he or she gets excited and anxious at where the Lord is leading them. Amen? But that's not the biggest piece of the puzzle that we're examining today. 
The latter part of verse 2 is where we find our minds shifted. The latter part of verse number 2 says, And in his law he meditates day and night, all the time. Hmm. The result, the point of this morning's sermon, is actually found in verse number 3. Verse 3 says, He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. Lord have mercy. We sing the song. Y'all know? Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be. We sing it, but do we understand it? Firming is what we're talking about. Many times we sing the song, or even we come to this psalm, and we'll, we'll, we'll sit for a moment and we'll talk about the tree being planted, but not the tree's location, the depth of that. You see, in farming, in farming, you have to have some type of channel of irrigation. If you go out to the Midwest and see the lands that are being farmed, you'll see a setup like this. It goes up and down the entire field, and it waters all the crops. Why does it water the crop? Because without water, it dies. Y'all heard me this morning. You ever wonder why Jesus says in John 4 that I will give you water, but water will spring up inside of you like a well of life? There's a source he's talking about, a resource that we need to be connected by. In the same way, if we don't have water, if we don't have proper water or proper irrigation, then how in the world can we survive? Amen. Let me let me let me let me drop something here if y'all don't mind a moment. You see, a tree planted by rivers of water was for the purpose of the tree being able to get resource whenever it needed. So they would plant it by a stream or a river of water, so that they don't have to worry about it getting water. If it's a famine, there's a stream there. It can still hold on to its strength. Y'all with me? It can still hold on to its strength. If it doesn't hold on to its strength, the tree might be in a world of trouble. Amen? If it doesn't hold on to its strength. So, church, my, my question to you this morning, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here at worship. I'm going to ask you this here, but I'm, I'm excited to be here at worship. I know y'all excited to be here at worship, right? Y'all excited to give God praise for all he's done, right? But, but here's, the, here's the truth. You, 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 you can't gain strength from only being drinking water one time. Amen, son. Look here, Bible study is cool, prayer mean good, but you can't get resource or expect to be built up only to get water once or twice or three times a week. This is a day-to-day -day thing, amen? We got to be rooted. Hey, yeah, yeah, huh? Because, Lord, we need water every single day because when extreme situations come, like famine, or the sun is burning extra hot, and you don't have water, Lord, we could talk about plants, but we could also talk about ourselves. We're a particular type of plant that needs a lot of water, amen? So my question to you, church, is where's your resource? What's on your mind? Amen? What's on your mind? Where are you planted right now? You got to ask yourself. You can't answer that out loud. You got to really sit down and think, where am I planted? Because I'm pulling something from everywhere. But if I'm by the resource, amen? If I'm by the resource, the word of God, amen? If I'm planted in his word, then the same resource, you can't pick up a tree easy. That's rooted by a body of water. Because the roots lead right into, underneath the body of water. So if you try to pull it, it's extra strong. Rooted. Grounded. Not that it know a lot of stuff. Amen. Not that it's always in church. But it's rooted so deeply. That's, that's, a, that's, that's hard to pull. Them branches stronger than you ever seen in your, amen. 
I was working at Penn Transit many years ago. You ever had somebody at your job? Some of y'all smiling and laughing already. But let's be honest. Homicide has crossed your mind with that person. And the only thing really stopping you is the episode of CSI. Because <laughs> they'll find out it's you. Hey, Amen. So you, you just, oh, uh, there's a gentleman at Penn Transit called Fitz. I ain't going to say his full name, but Fitz. Every Friday, I was the phone operator, which means if you called in, you talked to me in order to get a ride. But if the table was here where I operated, right here was where Fitz would sit. Fitz was deaf in one ear. So because he couldn't hear, he cussed a lot. He cussed, he said a whole bunch of junk from 5 p.m. until 3 in the morning. And I'm there working with him on Friday nights. On Friday nights, on Saturdays, on Sundays. Y'all with me? I'm going to just be honest. I have repented. But it, it's homicide crossed my mind several times. He wasn't going to kill me with his mess. I was going Y'all went, man, man. So after so long of me losing it, sitting next to him, my mother says, well, you don't like this guy. So what's your prayer life like before you walk in there? How deep are you in his word so that that don't bother you? I got to work with this guy. Proximity. Yeah, proximity. But there has to be a difference. I can't tolerate the stuff. So, for some strange reason, I took a Bible to work, put it right next to the computer, and I'd be studying during the entire time. I'm doing my job, but I'm studying the entire So much so, I don't hear him. Right next to me, and I don't hear him. Well, hold on, let me come back here. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, the word says this and the other. And to the point where, at a certain point, I started to quote scriptures right to him. You know what I learned about people that can't stand Christianity is? They can't stand you quoting scripture to them either. And so some people won't start something, they'll shut up. You know I'm sick of, oh, here he come again. I, <laughs> he was not, they were like, what did you do? He's nicer when I prayed. Two, I stayed in there. He was nicer, he was calm. I thought he was the best person in the world after a while because I, I was in the world at the same time he's right here. I'm right here in the word like I'm not hearing anything he's saying. Church, where are you planting? Because it don't just happen at our jobs. It happens in our houses sometimes. It happens when we're around family sometimes. It happens when we're at work sometimes. It happens all over where you just got to stay. You need a drink of water. Amen. Amen? So you get your drink of water from him? So that you'll never be thirsty again? Or are you taking a sip? And praying that'll last you for the whole week. I ain't saying answer now. I'm saying this is something to think about. Where are you planted? Lord, society will mess us up mentally. I'm just being honest. It will mess us up terribly. But we got to ask ourselves, where are we planted? Are we planted by the river of water? Are we deeply rooted so that our resource comes from Christ Jesus? Amen? That's a rough question. But it's a real one we have to ask ourselves. Because if you want sanity in this crazy world, while that seems extreme, I'm going to be in my Bible every day. Lord, child, I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nothing like being with the word, spending time with the Lord in his word every day. Amen? If society is crazy, we got to do something in a crazy way. Amen? We got to do something in a crazy way so that we don't lose our minds. It won't make sense to many of our friends. It won't make sense to some of our families. It won't make sense to folk we work with. But Lord Jesus, it is necessary 
of everything that we've discussed this month, of everything going on in society, Lord Jesus, why don't we rely on him to give us what we need to be able to deal with everything that's around us. Amen? That's my word this morning. I hope it's a blessing to you. I hope this entire month has been a blessing to you. But it's really is take this, apply it, run. Run hard with your cross. Amen? Follow Jesus with your cross. Run hard, but make sure you still, you drink your water. Amen? Because if you exercise, certainly you need more water than most. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's my word. Listen, if you're here, and, and, and the truth is, if, if you are here, and that's not been your habit these past couple weeks, months, what have you, I, I, Lord, I, I say it so often, I don't want it to be thought of as just something to say. Today is day one for you. Amen? Amen. Today is the day to start over and say, no, I need to stick it out with God. Amen? Amen. Today is the day. If not today, when? If you're not a member of the Lord's church, if you've not obeyed the gospel, if not today, then when? Why not come to Jesus right now? Why not? It's in your mind. Why not come to him today? Why not do as his word would say, believe and be baptized for the remission of your sins? Why not repent? Repent. Turn away from everything you've done without him and start to live a life with him. Amen. Lord Jesus, some of us that have already obeyed the gospel, Lord, we need to repent and get back in line. Amen. I'm not saying like, like I'm, I'm saying all of us, me included, me especially, all of us need to take a moment to say, hold up, let me get back on. Amen. That's my word for you today. We're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation giving you the opportunity to come to obey the gospel or even to repent and to rededicate your ways to following Christ. Why don't you come as we together stand and sing?